So we've got two boxes, but before we do those, I decided to finish off my uh, X-Men movie collection by getting Days of Future Past. It's pretty good, and uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine, which I understand to not be too spectacular. And then I got Big Hero 6. <sighs> but enough about that, let's get into anime. There should be four things here. Two packages, four things. So we got a bubble pile there, and then a right stuff package, which I'm obviously opening from the bottom because my uh, address is on the other side. Okay. Box is falling apart. But as long as we can get it open, I guess it's all fine, all right? This, I think it makes sense to once again do that. Take the receipt, put it aside. And there's our four things. First of all, um, we got a Space Pirate Mito and a Cat's Eye card. I guess since Persona 3, the movie number two, Midnight, Midsummer Night's Dream, I see it's. Right, uh, since this is on the top, we'll just begin with this. Now, this is, as usual, a Japanese release, but as Aniplex has done with some stuff, and they're actually probably about to do to me really shortly, uh, this is the... It's an official import, I guess, and they may do a dubbed version or not, I don't know. Because we're seeing a lot of that stuff on the move lately, I guess. And what I mean by that is, uh, Poilu Magic Madoka Magicka Movie 3, dubbed, comes out beginning of next month. Two discs. Probably only the first disc. Uh, no, that's a soundtrack CD. Okay. So, if I, I still haven't watched the first movie, and I guess the only reason I haven't is simply too many options, is so it never got priority. Interesting. And I guess I'm just not familiar with Persona in general. There's the Persona... The... There's a Persona 4 anime, which, uh, I'm sorry, the Blu-ray was dubbed only as part of the licensing deal, while the DVD... Hmm. Well, if it's just going to fall apart, then fine. Fall apart. See if I care. I'll just pop it aside. And what even is this? Is this a booklet, or are these kind of posts? Cards. We've got some front and back cards. Very well. Carp DM sees today. Character designs and information, apparently. Which is pretty much as expected. Alright, and then underneath that, we have the English translation booklet. And this, which was causing it to have a weird shape. I can kind of see there, there's an anime character thing. I seem to vaguely recall... Hmm. Can I do this without bending it so I can close it again? Yeah, there we go. I seem to vaguely recall the first one maybe having something like this. Don't know what it says, but it is pretty. So let's just... 
put it back together. A nigh impossible task. You just witnessed the impossible. Congratulations. And then there we go. Something tells me this was actually probably like that where I could see it. And then we just have this. It says I exist to protect you, but you know what? I think it exists to protect the anime itself. Hold on. Getting it into these things is annoying. In fact, why don't I do that off camera? We'll just leave this here and go to Devils and Realist. Which I have absolutely no idea what this is or what it's about. Interesting artwork. Character design sort of stuff. Um, whatever it is, I, I can see from here that it is not dubbed. It's region A only. It's a little speck of dust on the camera. Well, the thing on the back. Nothing to be all to worry about. <sighs> so, within the DVD version, we have two discs. This one does not want to rotate into place, so I'll just do it like that. And the Blu-ray version has one disc with the different artwork on it. The Curious series. Last but not least, we have a Bleach DVD set. 24. Yeah, there we go. It's just 24 down there. I don't know how much, how much, how many more DVDs will be needed. Uh, in theory, I could take a look at the number of episodes that come out, the number of episodes that's gone up, and take a guess. But I'm a little. I I, I don't know off the top of my head. Um what it's supposed to be. So, as usual, it's a pretty simple release. It's good that it's continuing to come out. Unfortunately, uh... Hmm. Yeah, I guess we'll try that. This is this week's Anime DVD Collection update. Definitely not as spectacular, but make do with what you got. So, as I mentioned last week, The World God Only Knows Season 3 was my, um, first priority, and of course I started it up, and some of you noted the next day that I might want to wait for the OVAs that come out in May, I believe. And unfortunately, I had watched enough of it that it didn't really matter. There's a gap in between a second season and a third season, but I got the impression that the gap was bigger than what the OVA would cover. It covers something very important, so I'll definitely watch it then when it comes out, but... It just begins with a lot of stuff. I'm like, I don't remember most of this. I don't know how much of that is I don't remember the second season in particular. Or rather, that by the beginning of this season, there's over a dozen conquests. And I think uh, they've only shown about half to two-thirds of that. So I kind of figured, since in the two-episode OVA or whatnot, he probably does not conquer... Um, twice as many girls or as many girls as did in the previous ones. There's a whole lot of just missing content, I guess. And so I kind of figured I'd just uh, continue watching this and it was pretty good. Um, I'm not sure if it's necessarily good in the same way as the first season, there's something about it that just seems more viscerally satisfying, maybe? I'm not sure if that's the right word for it. It was just... It's, it's like the first season kind of hooks you, and the second season shows you, yeah, there's some more to go, and there's some important backstory going on, and this had some important stuff going on in it that... 
I, I guess there's a part of me that doesn't question the character himself, but it's it's an interesting twist on where the series would go that means that it just wasn't stuck in some um, heroine of the month sort of thing. But... I, I guess I really don't have much more to say about it. I enjoyed it. I look forward to watching the OVA and filling in part of that missing gap in the middle there, and if there's more, it'll be nice to see more. So after that, I started watching The Familiar of Zero Season 2, Night of the Twin Moons, and, well, I guess the first thing I have to definitely get off my um, chest is, I forgot how much this series pisses me off sometimes, and it definitely did a pretty bad job of that at the very beginning. With, oh, arrest him, he must be the one causing ruckus, even though he was clearly the one attack bullshit, nobody ever apologizing for being scumbags like they are, and blah, blah, blah. but... I don't know how far I am into it, and especially since it's just one disc and I'm still somewhere in the middle of that disc. It is entertaining, thought-provoking. I mean, it's definitely not like Slayers, where I kind of feel like there's a big universe to it per se, far bigger than the anime could convey, but it is something where I'm still curious what's going to happen. And I guess I can't really think of too much I can talk about without spoiling it, but we'll f see what my impression of the second season is when I finish it, because uh, right now I haven't due to Monster Hunter pretty much. So what I mean by Monster Hunter pretty much is... Well, first of all, I, there's a mix of, of a couple things where um, some of my peers who... Um, I have the game and just don't play as much as me, have started playing a little bit more than their usual, I guess. In particular, Charles started playing and, uh, well, started being able to play again, and so we got to do a bit of that, and that, uh, ate up an evening? Did that? No? Yes, that ate up last evening. And then there was also, I reached high rank. Maybe I did that last week, but I did go into Caravan 8, which means that I am, you know, it, it's it's a transition point that's kind of, oh, great, now I, I have access to a whole lot of stuff, so it was easy to be distracted by that. Beyond that, let's see, I guess Big Hero 6 is on the top there, so obviously uh, I got it, and I got a chance to watch it, and I'd say it was okay, or at least I thought it was okay. Um, my biggest complaint about it, I guess, would be that it kind of felt a little forced, maybe. Like a, a sort of forced cool, where there's really neat ideas in there, and sometimes I, I just wonder if he made that, why did he even need to be going to college or nerd school or whatever? Because he pretty much already had the final product right then and there. He just really needed financing. I don't know. It's supposed to drive the plot, and I think it did, but like I said, something about it felt forced. Um, but probably the more notable thing I watched was The Legend of Korra um, Season 4. And it was a bit of a mix. I think it's supposed to be the last season of Legend of Korra stuff. It's definitely not out of the question that they could have more, just like they could make um, animated versions of the comic stuff they did for Avatar The Last Airbender. It takes place after Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, but in terms of where this ended... Um, so, I guess the first thing I want to say is I actually really liked the first couple of episodes. They were probably some of the best episodes of the, of uh, Legend of Korra, in my opinion. And I think a lot of that is because um, Legend of Korra, each of the seasons are kind of not, not exactly their own encapsulated story, but they're kind of close to that. Where and I've mentioned that there's kind of an o overarching theme, but it's it feels like it's more just kind of going on in the background. And season four begins with an accumulation of stuff that happened in the previous season, causing um, 
our main character to go through some real strife moments. And I'd like to say character growth happened, but it wasn't entirely clear to me how different she really was. I mean, maybe a little bit, but it didn't really feel like she grew. Where if you compare it to Avatar The Last Airbender, Aang never really... I'd say he didn't really grow per se so much as he took responsibility. I don't know, maybe some people would call that growing. But we kind of didn't expect him to... Uh, I don't know. The, the, long story short, my overall thoughts on Legend of Korra are that it's full of really neat ideas. And there's some parts here and there that are really good. But I feel like from a narrative standpoint, it's very lackluster. It's not the sort of thing where you say, oh my god, the story of Legend of Korra was the most awesome thing ever, and there was actually a lot of potential for that. Like I said, there's this overarching theme that's, that would have been really nice if it was much more direct, which is this question of, is the Avatar relevant in a modernizing world? And I think if they wanted to make the series work really well from a narrative perspective, what they would have needed to do was probably end the series on a... People could not have resolved this without the Avatar. And I think Avatar The Last Airbender kind of did. So they could have kept a lot of the strife in there, but... Well, I don't know. There's also some problems, like... My friend thought that the second season was the best season of them. And as far as the self-encapsulated seasons, I actually thought it was good because it kind of had a feeling that entire season of this is the conflict that's going on. Whereas season three just kind of had a conflict going on sort of in the background approaching our characters. Season one just kind of had it rumored in the background and then becoming an issue. But season two, you know, kind of has that it feels like a story sort of thing. And... About my only complaint is that while the backstory for the Avatar was interesting, I kind of feel like it conflicts with the story of Bending from the first series. In particular, it gives an impression that Bending comes from one certain thing, but people learned Bending, according to the first one, from observing natural phenomenon. Mostly animals, but in the case of waterbenders, obviously, they were seeing how the moon um, pushed and pulled the tides of the water. Now, maybe it's kind of added on to that, and maybe it could have been good if it was like a side parable sort of thing that makes you think, okay, well, it doesn't completely mesh with what I've heard about this, but maybe there's an intersection there. And there's possibility for that, but it just means that when I watch it as it is, it's weird. Well, that said, that's right, this had a really weird recap episode in it. It wasn't quite as good as the one from um, Avatar The Last Airbender, but it was... It, I think it's good they didn't try and duplicate that, and they probably wanted to summarize concepts before the end happened. And I'd like to comment more about the end conflict that did happen, and it's a mixture of really weird, but kind of neat, you know, just, just the whole series. Interesting, neat ideas, but I question how much of it feels quite right. So overall, I don't think it was a waste to watch, but I was hoping it would have been uh, something worthy of calling The Legend of Korra, because they kind of try and bring it together conceptually, but to have the characters say it and us not feel it means that there's that. And maybe other people feel like, yeah, this is the legend of Korra, but oh well. Let's see. Uh, next month, I did pre-order a bunch of stuff. I did mention that Poilu Mantra Madoka Magica Rebellion is coming out uh, beginning of next month. That's definitely good. But can I remember everything? Part of the problem was that I transitioned back into a state of pre-ordering all of my Aniplex and uh, NIS, and now I'm adding Pony Canyon to that list. So, um, 
I'm not sure what the release dates for everything is. And how much of that stuff I pre-ordered is coming out next month versus two or three months from now. So there's going to be a bit of surprise in that regard, but outside of that, it did seem like the DVDs were a bit more slim pickings, which is fine. Budget can always use a breather. And uh, it might also give me a chance to catch up on stuff. So I think that probably summarizes this week's anime DVD collection update. Y'all have a nice week.